What's up coaches? Hope you guys are doing well. Here's our video for Monday. So we're gonna roll with the same style of warm up. I really thought we got the hang of this and started to catch groove. Um, you're gonna be opening with the explanation of that primary movement, which will be the power snatch today and its intent and application during the actual strength. So go through your different tracks and talk about how athletes are gonna use that movement during the actual strength. Now, we're gonna keep it this way where during the warm up, we're doing snatches from the ground with a one second pause at the knee. I know this is a little bit confusing, but I think it's important that we continue to work technique when using these pause style positions. So during the warm up and during the warm up only, you're gonna use that power snatch with the one second pause at the knee. All right, so just a clear reference here, what we're looking at is bar set up from the floor, meaning Pause one second here and then completing the snatch. All right. So once you have explained the snatch, uh, then go ahead and demo the movements. Talk about the power snatch with the one second pause. Have them do their five reps. Talk about the 10 step back lunge to drive the knee. That's going to be a step back, light tap, and then drive. Step back, light tap, and then drive. If that range of motion is tough, don't worry about going all the way down. Uh, they can step back, decrease the range of motion as they see fit. And then we're going five sprawl to shoulder tap. So this is going to be a sprawl followed by a tap tap. That's going to equal one rep. So I'll sprawl, strong straight arms, tap, tap, and back to my feet. Uh, I'm going to do five repetitions. All right. So now you're diving into the actual warm-up. You go a 10-minute AMRAP here for quality. You have a likely build-up at the snatch. Please note that repetitions are much, much lower than your powerlifting-based movements. We're starting at three and then working our way to down, doing just doubles and singles. All right, this is a power day within our cycle. Remember, we're employing the power of small, repeated sets of explosive, perfect practice. Not heavy, explosive perfect practice. So our um, uh, set here, we're doing every two minutes for seven cycles. You guys are likely getting the feel for this and the general flow. So we have um, the competitor group. This will flow really just like the power cleans we did on Friday, doing two at 80 to 85 percent of one rep max. Uh, then we have our strength performance group doing four hang power snatch. They did not set a max with this. They may not know it, all we want is heavy, but perfect, but really focusing on speed more than anything. Both groups have a goal of increasing two and a half to five pounds. If they absolutely nailed their last, last snatch session, then we want them to increase that weight. Specifically for the snatch, you cannot travel up in weight until you nail the speed and the technique. Otherwise, you set yourself backwards with really bad muscle memory and position. So it's more important than any other movement that technique is 100% nailed before people add weight to the bar. So we have four loaded step ups each leg. Those loaded step ups, uh, we want kneecap height for the box and we wanna hold the kettlebell in the front rack position for that loading, all right? So what we wanna make sure and do is as we step, we're not driving hard off this back leg, that as we step up, we're getting heavy on this leg, stepping up to the top of the box, and then returning back down. Get heavy, step up to the top of the box, and then return back down. Most important thing here is that we're holding posture throughout the course of the step, um, and that the hips aren't shooting back. Now we work into the four to eight ring push-ups. This is honestly a repeat of the accessory movements we did with the snatch the last time. So for the four to eight ring push-ups, or it could be dips for your competitor-based group, we want a tough but repeatable set uh, where we're getting good full range of motion, keeping the body in a nice, tight, straight line. Overall principle of the entire session, this is super important, small repeated sets, explosive, perfect, practice. That's what we want to see and that's the way you should feel about the session as a whole. All right, so let's talk workout. We're going to be going five rounds and we're going to be using this 30 second on, 30 second off interval again today. So our first 30 second interval is going to be max shuttle runs at 30 feet. That means you're going to set cones 30 feet apart. Athletes are going to go as many times 
through as they can in that 30 um, second time frame. All right, this is the centerpiece of our intensity, 90 to 95% effort. We wanna be right on that red line, um, but not going over, but have a goal of being consistent as always. With those shuttle runs, we need to create intensity here. So if that can be done with running and or change of direction style running, we need to sub in the bike here for that 30 seconds. Those that are capable, I want them to drop and touch the line. Um, if it fires up the low back as it does sometimes with shuttle runs, then it can just be a plant without the drop and touch. 30 seconds of rest then takes him into 30 seconds of single arm dumbbell thrusters. That's gonna be 15 seconds each side, and it's your goal to call that out as a coach. So I'm gonna be going to one second pause at the top of every rep, full squat, pause, full squat, pause, full squat, pause. Doesn't have to be long, they just own that top range of motion, all right? Powerful leg drive and an explosive punch for that range of motion. Okay. So it should be something that um, we're able to do unbroken for the um, 15 seconds on each arm. Ideally something that could be done 15 unbroken when fresh. Make sure you hit a uh, primer here to make sure that the shuttle runs create intensity and that the thrusters are um, something that fits within the confines of the, um, of the stimulus. And then logistics here. For the strength, you guys are likely getting a feel for this. We're getting a groove, but you can definitely have multiple athletes within a single station. Just designate that right from the beginning so that the flow of your class goes much, much smoother. All right, and then you'll have the second athlete start at the one minute mark of each round. Um, and then the workout. The workout, depending on your size, um, equipment, you may need to have partners here. You'll have one athlete begin on the shuttle run, the other start on the dumbbell thrusters, and then after that 30 seconds, they'll switch. Pretty easy logistics um, there for the shuttle runs. Cool, hope you guys have a great day. Let me know if you have feedback on your class today. See y'all.